The majority of problems that you're likely to experience when teaching clog dance come from the rushing of rhythms. In this video, we're going to take a look at specific rhythms that tend to rush and I'm going to give you some ideas about how to set up your students so that they can be more consistent and play more steady. We're going to teach your students how to become more patient. We're going to teach them how to prepare every note. And we're going to teach them how to watch their teacher. The first rhythm that I want to go over is something like this in measure seven and eight where we have a quarter note followed by a quarter rest and then another quarter note followed by a quarter rest. Can the students find beat one? Can they find beat three? Let's start with beat one. So I'm gonna modify this rhythm when first introducing it. I'm gonna turn on a metronome. It doesn't have to be 120 to start off with. We can slow it down a little bit and I'm going to try to get them to verbalize where beat one is. So the, the metronome is going to tick four times, one, two, three, four, and everybody is going to say one on beat one. We can do this over and over and over just to make sure the students are able to verbalize. Now, one of the advantages of verbalizing it is that a lot of them are going to naturally breathe before they say one. So it's gonna be one, two, three, breathe one and you can already start getting them to breathe, which is important for developing consistent rhythm. The breath teaches patience because it gives the students an action to do in the rest, and it also helps them to prepare for what's about to come. Eventually, your low strings are going to have this rhythm pizzicato. In seven and eight, it's arco, all down bows, but for instance, in measure 10, in measure 12, it's, it's pizzicato. And if we go a little further in this piece, like 31, for instance, a half note pizzicato note followed by another half note pizzicato note is basically the equivalent of quarter, rest, quarter, rest. Once your students are able to verbalize on beat one consistently, you can start getting them to pluck on beat one consistently. So when they're on beat four, they want to do two things. They want to breathe, and they also want to pull back the string and get ready for beat one. So it's going to go like this. One, two, three, pull, release. And you can also say one, two, three, breathe, play. When your students are practicing this arco, during the rest, they're still going to breathe, and they're also going to practice setting the bow. So it's going to be one, two, three, set, play. Once the students are able to consistently find beat one verbally with pizzicato and arco, now you can have them play on beat one and on beat three. And you're going to do this the same way, except in beat two, they're going to breathe, they're going to pull back the string, they're going to set the bow. It's gonna go like this, verbally first. One, breathe, three, breathe. One, breathe, three, breathe. And then we do the same thing with pizzicato. One, pull, three, pull. One, pull, three, pull. Then we're gonna do it arco. One, set, three, set, one, set, three, set. If your students are still rushing on the pizzicato or on the arco, have them increase the circle when they're getting back onto the string. So have them do a bigger bow lift if they're rushing because that's going to take more time. Or for the pizzicato, have them pull off the string and reset. Pull off the string and reset. Sometimes kids can be like German shepherds, you know, if you don't give them something to do, they're going to find something to do and you're not going to like what they find. So during those rests, you need to give them something to do that takes up that time of the rest or else they're going to rush. I like to do this with the metronome just to get the students started, but eventually you're going to need to 
wean the students off of the metronome and respond to you as the teacher. And to do this, you want to make sure that you can be unpredictable as a conductor, sometimes do it faster and sometimes do it slower. That way they're required to watch you or, or give them some new information that they're going to need so that they're watching you and paying attention because you're going to want to develop that habit pretty quickly. The next rhythm that we need to address are the four eighth note, two quarter note rhythms. Now there's some controversy over the name of this rhythm. Okay, there's pepperoni pizza, pepperoni pizza, which is the optimal way to teach it because let's face it, pepperoni pizza is delicious. If it's good enough for Ninja Turtles, it's good enough for me. Pepperoni pizza is the way to go here. Now, less optimal is Mississippi hot dog. Hot dogs are inferior to pizza. And why is Mississippi known for their hot dogs? I, I don't know. I thought they were known for barbecue. Uh, what, what's with the Mississippi hot dog? It makes no sense. But it's still better than tucka tucka stop stop. If you're using that rhythm, you, you're not even trying. That's not even a food. So let's just summarize this, okay? Pepperoni pizza is greater than Mississippi hot dog, which is greater than tucka tucka stop stop. The important thing is that when we're playing this rhythm, we need to start at the balance point. So why the balance point and not the middle? Well, because most of the time, it, when, when it's being approached, it's being approached by half notes. And with the half notes, if we start in the balance point, we're able to get all the way into the upper half of the bow and then come back to the balance point and then we're able to play eighth notes at the balance point. And this kind of gives us the best of both worlds. The balance point's not a bad place to play eighth notes like these. Um, it's, it's a lot better than playing them at the frog, which is where a lot of your students are going to tend to want to play, especially your low strings. So if you can have them get back to the balance point every time, that's going to help the consistency for this rhythm. A lot of teachers, particularly for beginning strings, will tape where the balance point is on everyone's bow. And so like when students are playing at measure 11 and they're playing half note, half note, stop. Okay, where's your bow? Is it, is it on that tape? You know, we, we, we tape the, the left hand like crazy. Why don't we tape the bow? So that, that might be a good strategy for you there. A lot of times the pepperoni pizza rhythm will rush, but it's not pepperoni pizza's fault. It's actually the half notes fault. And so when I practice this, I like to set it up with the half notes and make sure that they can play from the balance point. One, two, three, four, stop. One, two, three, four, stop, so that they know where beat one is. And this is going to teach them to internalize. It's going to teach them to be patient and wait for beat one so that pepperoni pizza isn't early. Again, to teach this, students can verbalize when they're playing this, and I would have them play just open D strings, one, two, three, four, stop, and have them say, one, two, three, four, stop, so that everybody's on the same page and they're starting to internalize the beat. All right, measure 23 is the dangerous spot. And the reason why is because we have the half notes in second violins and violas, which is the same section, second violins and violas are interchangeable, uh, against quarter notes everywhere else. And we also have the, the quarter note, quarter rest, quarter note, quarter rest rhythm and the low strings. Both of those rhythms tend to rush. So we're putting the, the two rushing rhythms together in the same spot and hoping it's not gonna rush. So hopefully we've practiced these independently and we've developed the skill to where when we put these together, this doesn't take off and get out of control. All right, the last rhythm that I want to talk about is three quarter notes and then the quarter rest. And, and this appears in the, in the main melody of the piece. And the issue with this is that a lot of times on beat three, the students will play very short and then they'll rush for beat one of the next measure. So let's just look here at measure 14 where we have that. We want to make sure that beat three is nice and long. 
So one, two, three, off, one. And again, you can have your students verbalize this and make sure three, lots of E on that so that they're saying it nice and long. You can say one, two, three, lift, play, and that will help keep the tempo under control. Have them verbalize it first and then try it just on open Ds. Make sure that they can bow consistently on the open Ds before you start adding fingers with the left hand and then you can get them to play the, the, the three, two, one. If you can solve those rhythmic issues, you're gonna be in pretty good shape for a clog dance. It's gonna give you some good consistency and getting everybody to play together at the same time is gonna make this piece easier to rehearse and it's gonna make everybody a lot more confident in their performance so it doesn't take off and get out of control. In the next video, we're gonna talk a little bit about pitch and how to establish pitch because we want our orchestra to sound good and if our orchestra plays out of tune, it's not gonna sound good. So we're gonna talk about the major pattern or the two, three pattern and some strategies on how to get those F sharps as high as they need to be to play in tune.